Hey, Leslie, are you there? Here I am. All right, awesome. Hey, thanks for giving us a call today and being on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Did we catch you in the middle of practice? Um, I was planning on going to practice, but <sighs> we, uh, uh, yeah, this isn't the very best timing ever, but that's okay. I got a couple minutes for you. What's okay, going sure. On? sure. Uh, well, let us know when you need to head out. But yeah, no, thanks for giving us a call. Uh, yeah, we're... We're excited. Um, you guys, if you guys don't know, Leslie Smith is a, is a uh, UFC fighter fighting for the 135-pound uh, division in the UFC. Um, she actually has a fight coming up. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your fight um, in December? Yeah, totally. Totally. I'm fighting on December 17th in Sacramento. It's a UFC on Fox show, so it should be free on Fox, although I might be on the fight pass portion of the fight okay. of the uh of the card so that'll be really easy for anyone to get you just go on fight pass if you don't already have it it's uh there's a free seven day trial so I'll everybody can watch the fight my <laughs> opponent her name is irena aldana it's going to be her first fight in the ufc okay awesome yeah i saw that she's from uh, invicta is that right yes this will be her um first fight away from invicta after quite a few over there okay all right um and so it's exciting because I think, you know, a lot of people have been very interested, especially in you, as a lot has been going on uh, with the UFC, with the union and all these different things. And um, we're excited to, to see, you know, not only Leslie fight as she's been showing us outside of the octagon, but to really show us what she's got inside the octagon as well. So, um, yeah. But what do you what's your prediction for the fight? How do you think it's going to go? Uh, you know, I don't really do fight predictions right now I can say that what I think that she's going to do is um, uh, probably score points and, and look nice um, you know she's good technique and she does look very good working out along the outside and so I'm going to have to find my ways to uh, to shut that down and to put a stop to it okay are you looking to stop the fight hey crazy hey animal chewy uh -oh. Sorry, I'm walking <laughs> these dogs right now. Okay. Am I looking to stop the fight? Absolutely. Everybody wants to stop the fight. If mm -hmm. someone says that they're going for a decision, then um, <laughs> they're probably lying or incredibly non-confident. Sure. Um, neither of which am I. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, great. the goal is always to, to put a stop to the fight. Um, I, I'd love to get a knockout. I'd love to get a submission. Yeah, definitely. Um, e either way... I'll be thrilled with a stoppage, and, and nobody wants ever to let a fight go to the refs. Um, no. Because once it's in the refs' hands, it's out of your own hands. And Definitely. And they, the, the, the is, judges don't have hmm? the best track records. so. No, they don't. Yeah. Hey, crazy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, one of the things that I'm talking to the, the different groups, the PFA and the MMAFA, well, actually, I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with the PFA. Yeah, tell um, us. In a second. But uh, with the MMAFA, um, since they are the organization that wants to change things for all the fighters, mm -hmm. uh, what I want to do is um, start a group that is going to regulate or at least review the officials. Um, hmm. Because officials have a lot of power, tons of power. Definitely. And they make bad calls all the time. And they're human. You know, I, I don't hate any kind of officials or anything like that. However, um, when they're making decisions that are affecting people's careers mm -hmm. and uh, frequently their lives, their lives, our hands are literally in the hands of the ref yeah, that's when true. we fight. Um, you know, I mean, someone having a choke on a fighter and it's the ref doesn't do his job and stop it in the right time then yeah. they could die it's, it's true <laughs> it's a scary but very true fact and then uh and then um you know compared to life or death then the money and and uh rankings and stuff like that isn't quite as big of a deal but this past weekend i was at i got to do post fight interviews at um, Invicta Fighting Championship. Okay, I'm awesome. sure you guys are familiar with Invicta. Yeah, we just had uh, Shannon and Tanya on uh, last week. Oh, that's wonderful. Was it right before their fight? Right before the fight. The fight? Nice. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Shannon is amazing to get to work with. And, um, you know, Tanya got a really... Tanya got screwed by the ref. Yeah. Um, his name was Mike England. 
Okay. And as soon as I started tweeting about his bad call, tons of people from the state of Missouri started tweeting back to me saying, yeah, he's horrible. We've had to deal with him for years. Wow. Um, and what happened was uh, Tanya had gotten put in an arm bar. Mm-hmm. And so she was standing up and she was putting her face on her opponent's. I mean, she was putting her foot on her opponent's face. Yep. And to defend the arm bar. And the ref told her to remove the foot from the face. Oh. Even though it's not an illegal move, and right. then she tapped out to the armbar seconds yeah. later. So, oh gosh, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> the same ref um, earlier in that night, Alexa Connors was fighting mm-hmm. Stephanie Ager. Yep, and Alexa Connors um, had her uh, opponent up against the cage and was en route to a TKO victory. Which, like we talked about earlier, is always the goal to right. not have the ref. Um, the the judges have to decide the fight. We always want a stoppage. Right. And so uh, she was right there with the TKO victory when her opponent's mouthpiece came out. Mm. And so the ref stopped the fight in the middle of a flurry no. up against her opponent, up against the cage. Um, Alexa thought she had won the fight and immediately started running around Ugh. the cage with the, her celebratory... Yeah. Celebratory hands up that whole deal, and uh, and then the ref just handed back the mouthpiece and said, "Keep going," <laughs> which gave the opponent enough time to get her breath back, and then uh, the fight continued and went the rest of the way all the way to uh, a judge's decision. Yeah. See, and that's I mean, and and, and even on a lesser. I don't want to say lesser stance, but I mean even just with Tywin Woodley uh, last week at UFC 205, um, uh-huh. just the the miscommunication even in the ring um, with the uh, with the guys not giving the right the right call in the beginning, and then they get have to do a second um, announcement of who won and all the different things. And Tyron looked like he was about to punch Dana in the face, <laughs> like like you're not about to take my belt away. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. There's a lot of there's a lot of judging, and it doesn't happen just in MMA. I was at Glory uh, 34 here in Denver a few uh, about a month ago, and even uh, the Holt Skin versus Gronhart fight. Uh, it was I, I thought it was pretty clear that Gronhart won, but there's some things that it, it makes you wonder even just if there are other factors into how judges score the fights. So I don't know. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot that needs to be happening. But you mentioned the PFA. So uh, you mentioned you had something to share with us. What's what's that? Yeah, um, I am uh, I'm writing a letter that is going to be an apology letter to everyone that I introduced Jeff Boris to. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm i not impressed with the way that, uh, that he's been conducting his part okay. of... Um, of uh, of managing the fighters' interests, hmm. um, and I'm now convinced um, that the only way for a fighters' union to be effective is if there are no agents involved at all. Wow. Um, Jeff had created a board of agents and um, shared some information with them, hmm. and uh, and this is after telling me that everything that we were doing was confidential. Sure. And so I uh, I was really disappointed with his um, lack of transparency and uh, and and if someone tells me that something's confidential, I don't think that they're going to tell anyone else. Right. Hey, on, Doug, right here. And so I I see that as a lie. Um, yeah. And I I don't think that there is any way to argue that it isn't. Uh, if someone understands the word confidential which i i believe jeff boris does especially as a um, lawyer right and he... yeah yeah okay yep and then uh shares information with other people then that is um a breach of trust and and they lied so Whoa. i uh i'm writing a letter to detail what went down and i'm apologizing to all the fighters and any trainers or managers that I, I brought Jeff around and vouched for him or introduced him. Um, it's it's really unfortunate to see people using the valuable information of people 
people uh, taking an interest, an active interest in investing in their future wow. um, by standing up for their rights and for the rights of their coworkers, in this case the fighters, um, to see people taking that information and both manipulating it and using it for their personal gains. So, Wow. Um, it's nothing that I can be a part of at this point. And, and I do want to say that Lucas Middlebrook has been wonderful throughout everything. Okay. Um, uh, so he, I, I don't want my statements to be about the PFA. Sure. My statements are about Jeff Boris. Gotcha. So mm-hmm. does this in any way change your relationship with the PFA? Well, it depends. I'm, uh, I'm really hoping that Jeff will step away from the PFA. Oh, wow. Um, that, that would be the very best possible result of this because, um, you know, an infrastructure has already been created for the PSA and mm-hmm. it's already got some, some knowledge from the fire. Hey, 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 come here, hey, shoot. It's, uh, come here. <laughs> it's already got knowledge um, from the fighters. Okay. And, and that's a big deal. Educating people on on everything is, is a big deal. And so uh, right. it'd be wonderful um, to be able to hold on to what we've already got. But if not, then, then I have no problems moving on and, and starting something else. Um, wow. The, the goal, it, it might even be better to start something else. Okay. Um, the goal is to have a union that is completely run by fighters, mm-hmm. where all the choices are made by the fighters. Um, there's there's no need for an agent. Um, uh, there are a lot of lawyers mm-hmm. like like Lucas who um, actually do have the fighters' interest in mind, who are willing to uh, to go over contracts. But that's how I feel the union um, needs to be in order to move forward. Instead of it being spearheaded by any kind of uh, agency or lawyers or a firm, mm-hmm. it needs to be spearheaded by the fighters. Right. And any work done by lawyers needs to be billed. They they are not a part of the union. Mm-hmm. They uh, they need to be billed for the time that they've done. And we have to be very careful about choosing ones that have a lot of integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, like like Lucas, you know, people yeah. people like Lucas who have uh, started unions before and gone through the entire process and have reverence and respect for that process and and the uh, the people involved in it. Okay, wow, that's huge. Um, yeah. So, okay, lots of, I got some follow-up questions then. So, <laughs> uh, with Jeff and, because Jeff and, and Lucas are pretty much the, in terms of like non-fighters, they're the, one, the ones really spearheading the PFA um and so is that kind of like what the executive board is supposed to represent is what you're just sharing now about um having the fighters really being the ones in charge of the direction that the pfa goes yep and that that is something that lucas was advocating the entire time is that we need to hurry up and get a board in place Mm -hmm. because we don't we don't need or want anybody else speaking for us right uh, this is this is about the fighters and the fighters' needs and wants and um, and they can speak for themselves. Okay. And so, how close are you guys to getting that done? That, uh, gosh, you know, I I feel like a lot of progress has been made in this whole thing. Um, it was it was like eight or nine years ago that Rob Macy started the MMAFA mm-hmm. and made a he's made a lot of ground covered a lot of ground as far as educating fighters and making progress with both the Ali Act and um, there is a lawsuit that is in place right now against the UFC and for their for their business practices mm-hmm. and so um, we also maybe not a ton but the PFA did make some progress as far as uh, getting information out there and educating more people about the process and what needs to happen so it, anything that is started right now it's not starting from ground zero gotcha. it's starting from what has been built by everybody else who who whether they had proper intentions or not um, you know everyone's contributed mm-hmm. everyone who's made efforts so far has contributed so right 
And so, so um, oh. as far as progress goes, <laughs> in order to answer your question, I feel like uh, there's been a lot of progress in the education department and all the fighters who already say that they want to be on board. Um, uh, that That's all progress. Mm-hmm. As far as the individual, um, you know, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about this is going to be Leslie Smith's union or anything like that. You know, sure. if there's something else that's already going, which I really hope that there is. I, I'm happy to go join that. Um, I had I had put my lot in with, with PFA as well as MMAFA because I felt like they were both uh, going the right direction. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, I no longer feel like Jeff Boris is going the right direction. So I'm stepping away from that. And I'm going to look for either another vehicle to take me in that direction yeah. or um, or build another vehicle. Okay, okay. And so going back to what Jeff was, you know, making available to other agents, so was it a situation where there was a selective group of agents uh, that represented UFC fighters that he, by himself, created uh, and yeah, then just was sharing exactly. information? He created a board of agents and then shared information with them. Was and was Lucas like aware of these types of things? Nope, Lucas did not know any of this. Wow. We found out. We found out at the same time. And so, what kind of like pay or fighters pay? Like, what what kind of information? I mean, obviously not specifics, but in general, what was the kind of stuff that was being shared with right. this group? Um, I, I don't feel like there's any way for me to tell you without reiterating any of his messages. Um, and okay. so, I'm probably going to stay away from that. Gotcha. Right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, no worries. All right. So, wow, that's, that's, that changes the landscape quite a bit because, um, you know, just for me as a fan, I'm looking from the outside in, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting, you know, for just a union in general, but it looked like the PFA was going to be, you know, the, the lead horse race, um, horse in the race. And in terms of, just the clout that they had and having the connections and the endorsements of all these other player associations um, and what you just shared. And then been having you as like the most vocal fighter um, basically endorse this, this, this organization. I think that that said a lot, but for you to, what it sounds like is you're kind of uh, taking back your endorsement and absolutely. Wow. So that definitely changes the landscape. So as a, and I know you said you're writing letters to fighters, to trainers, to managers who might have been affected by the disclosure of this information. Um, what do you say to fighters now, as it seems like maybe a couple steps have been taken back in terms of uh, even just the momentum of getting this union going, um, having to re look at some things over again and figure out, okay, are we going to continue to go forward with the PFA and just ask Jeff Boris to step down? Are we going to go with a completely different organization altogether? What are the, what's the message that you're now trying to communicate to fighters? Right. Well, I, I, I waited, I waited, I've been sitting on this for about a week because, um, I was a little bit indecisive as far as what exactly that message that I wanted it to be Mm -hmm. was. And I, I, I don't want people to feel like we're taking a step back, and that's what I was feeling like as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that the new message needs to be that we need to create create a group where fighters are the ones that lead and choose any directions that we do or do not take. And so that that's my message is just that, and you know what? Fighters know this. Fighters know that we have to stick together. Mm-hmm. Fighters know that agents um, say things that, that they want the fighters to believe that they can't always live up to. Sure. And, and that's the same thing as, uh, you know, the, the promotions, any promotions. <laughs> um, there's, there's some wonderful ones like Shannon over at Invicta. Mm-hmm. I, I've never heard a single fighter complain about her, but yeah, I cannot say praise. that about any other promotion. Um, where they haven't, at least in one way or shape or form, you know, maybe nothing worth serious litigation, but uh, not lived up to everything they promised. Mm-hmm. And so, so fighters know that that really, when it comes down to it, nobody else is going to look out for them except for 
except for themselves. And, and this is the only way for us to look out for ourselves is to step up and make our voices heard and, and take a stand. And and we, uh, we fight each other inside the cage, but we need to fight for each other outside of the cage because that's the only way that we're going to win. So mm. I think that a big goal is going to be writing out um, – a constitution mm -hmm. for the fighters that clarifies and establishes that only fighters can make decisions. Sure. Um, I know that that was actually a big reason that a lot of fighters were reluctant to jump in with anything like the PFA or, or any other group that's led by um, agents or, or uh, private firms mm -hmm. is because they were reluctant about letting um, any of their decisions get made by someone else, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a very legit worry. Sure. It's a very legit worry, and in the past, I had thought that we, um, we needed to organize first, and then once we were together and had voting power, then we would be able to vote for whoever we wanted to have in, but I'm realizing that... that <laughs> I had that a little bit backwards, that mm -hmm. we need to protect ourselves first and foremost out of anything. Yeah. And that after that, once we're protected, um, then we can look to do more from there. Definitely, definitely. Well, gosh, that's a lot. Um, I'm excited to see how this all progresses because I think that as, I mean, it's, it's obvious, this has become, tw 2016, 2015 and 2016 have probably been the most interesting years when it comes to MMA with just the progress and the, the evolution of the sport um, and you've been a huge role in helping to see that that move forward so uh, congratulations to you even just for being willing to I mean and it's not like you're getting paid you know extra money just to for this work that you're doing so I, you know, I, I think that a lot of fighters should commend you for just the work that you're doing the vision that you have for the sport and I think it's even one of those things where it's hard to, you know, I think a lot of fighters can look and say, hey, you know, well, I don't know if this is even going to benefit me in my career. Um, and yet it, it seems just kind of looking from the outside in that uh, you're not so worried about that. Maybe that you have a bigger vision for the sport than what it can uh, bring to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, for the sake of honesty, come on, Doug. Come on. We, we got a new puppy around the house. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> why I'm doing all this talking. Come sure. here, Come on, dog. Come on. <laughs> um, for the sake of transparency, I, I definitely want to admit that there's a very real possibility that the union and a collective bargaining agreement and, you know, all these rights for fighters and, and higher pay rates and revenue, that there's a good chance that it'll take five to ten years before it comes to fruition. Right. I, I think I was being super optimistic before when I was hoping that within a year everything would change. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the more that I learn, then the more educated I am and, and the smarter comments that I can make and, and better decisions that I can make. And um, So for, for the sake of transparency, I, I totally have to admit that you're completely right, that the people who are risking their careers or uh, risking being selected for favors from the UFC, from Dana White, that, sure. um, you know, that they might not actually get to see anything come mm -hmm. from that for years. But uh, it is the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and it will come to happen eventually. There's no way that, that it can be prevented at this point. The sure. ball is already rolling. People already know. And, and they're going to take steps. It's just about how long it's going to take. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think that's about as much time we have today, Leslie. Uh, we're obviously, we could talk to you for hours on end. Uh, we want to let you get back to the puppy, the new addition to the family. Uh, <laughs> but thank you so much for your comments. I think that this is going to help a lot of fighters and even just the fans understand because, you know, the fans, we, we want to support you guys. We, we're on yeah. the fighters' side and uh, we're on your team, and we want to see you guys for many years. The, the fans are like, the fighters just don't get paid enough, you know, and it's, it's even deeper yeah. than that. And, and we want to see, you know, you guys get taken care of even after your careers are over. You know, we don't want to have a sport where we have fighters who, uh, you know, have slurred speech and all that craziness after their careers are over. We want to take care of you guys as a as a community at large so uh we appreciate you coming on you guys follow follow leslie 
at uh hold on i have your twitter handle here uh, <laughs> leslie what is it leslie smith it's leslie smith underscore gf what's the gf but stand for for gracie fighter okay okay right i've had people ask me if it's for gluten-free or girlfriend <laughs> but no it's it's for Gracie Fighter. A, an easier one, actually, is on my Instagram. It's just Leslie Smith MMA. Oh, okay. And I, at this point, that's probably where I'm the most active. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I put out the most information, and it's probably... Luckily, uh, Instagram has an edit function, so I definitely sound smarter on my Instagram <laughs> than I do on my, my Twitter feed with all kinds of things. Yeah. In fact, earlier, I just tweeted um, about how I left my management company oh. because uh, at 205 in New York, mm -hmm. I found out that they are invested in the Dakota Access Pipeline. And oh. um, and so I, I thank them for everything that they've done for me, but said that I can no longer work with them. Wow. And when I put out, I just, no, why? Ah, because um, I firmly believe that the Dakota Access Pipeline should be stopped. Oh, yeah. And that the inhumane treatment of the water protectors in North Dakota um, is inhumane and a violation of human rights. And that... Uh, <laughs> that it should not be going on. Um, right. I think that the rights of indigenous people in this country, ah, look, we just got started on another topic. I'm sorry, <laughs> we were closing it. But no, it no, that, preach. That's what it is, is that I, I believe uh, in, I, and I've, I've spent time in North Dakota. I went out there for a couple of days. My sister actually just landed in Bismarck and yeah. is going um, an hour south to the camp where the protesters are at to go and support them and and be a part of that and then after my fight I'm going to be going back out there as well and so I couldn't uh, I, I, I can't in good conscience have any kind of business relationship with anyone who supports something that I so adamantly am against definitely uh, activism yeah. runs strong in the Smith blood so um, <laughs> that's great that's great I think that that's great yeah. that you're uh, very aware of these types of things um, and that you put action behind your beliefs, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, um, well, Leslie, obviously you're a great interview. We're going to have to have you back on after your fight. Uh, d again, that's going to be December 17th, um, UFC on Fox 22 in Sacramento, California. Um, we look forward to watching you fight. And, you know, and again, thank you for all the info about uh, the, the PFA. We're, we're going to continue to keep our eyes peeled and, you know, get some more information about what's going on. And, um, make sure that we're an educated community so that we know how to support you guys. Wonderful. And I thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate everybody who asks what they can do to help. But at this point, I, I feel like the most important thing is going to be encouraging the fighters to help themselves. Great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me on. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And, and thank you for what you do. Thank you so much, Leslie. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Uh, that was ridiculous. That was crazy. Um, thanks to Leslie Smith for coming on to the show. Uh, let's just be honest. I was not prepared for all that. I, I, you know, I was expecting when I was going to ask her about the PFA, I was expecting for her to give like a progress report and to hear more about the executive board that was going to be, that's being created. And I had no idea she was going to come on and say, Hey, and basically, uh, revoking my endorsement of the PFA. That is crazy. Um, and with Jeff Boris basically mismanaging fighters' information and giving that out, I think that as I'm sure that more of the story is going to unravel as time goes on. But just to know that I think it's, it's, it, you put yourself in a very vulnerable position as a fighter if you give your information to this guy who says he wants to help you um, and then you abuse that trust uh, as Leslie said and you go ahead you go ahead and start sharing that information with other people and when it comes to even what she I asked her I said did did, uh, did Lucas even know about this formation of this uh, this uh, managers board or agents board and she was like, no, he had no idea about it. That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know what the legal word is for it, but that's, um, is that a, I mean, 
it's just ridiculous. You're trying to create um, an environment of trust of people feeling like they can, that they are going to put their, they're risking their careers to give you this information, to say that they're on your team, to say that they're going to, um, they're going to allow you to represent them. And then you go back and you start giving their information to other people. Um, and then who are those people, right? Who are those managers that he gave this information to? Uh, what are their interests? What are, uh, what did they, what are they doing with that information? Um, did he sell that information? You know, it's like, because there's so much um, unknown or even just that just was not transparent, um, you can't, how do you know what happened? And, and so now it's like fighters already were a little weary of um, joining a union or, or, or signing up and putting their, putting their livelihood, putting their trust in somebody. I think that now with this, this now coming out, it's like, okay, now fighters are going to be even more so afraid to trust the next person because this guy had all the credentials. He was a lawyer, you know, the agent of Barry Bonds, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think it's unfortunate even for Lucas, who we had on the show, he, I, you know, from, you know, I don't, I don't know Lucas personally, but we've, you know, been able to text back and forth quite a bit and um, just seeing how he responds to stuff on Twitter, like he's very active. He really cares. It sounds like he really cares about the fighter's best interest. And so it's unfortunate that he, you know, is, is, you know, not a part of it, but it sounds like, you know, he's obviously he's associated with the PFA. And so even as Leslie said, Leslie didn't know anything about this. She wouldn't have endorsed, she would not have, uh, uh, supported anything like that. And that's why she's writing out these letters of apology to these fighters and different members of the MMA community just to say, hey, guys, I'm so sorry I drew you into this thing. Um, and it ended up not being what we thought. And so, you know, I don't really know the history of unions being created or formed, but this is not the way to go. This is not the way to go. And when you you're only you're only hurting you're only helping the UFC right like you're only helping them you're it's basically like if if they then they're not even doing any work right they're not even doing anything to dismantle like at least from our my perspective it doesn't look that way but it looks like self-inflicted damage self-inflicted harm um on the end of the fighters and so I think what Leslie said is that hey, you know what, that's why we're trying to do this executive board and we need to make sure the fighters are completely in control. This is their organization, not a borrowed organization. And I think that, you know, the PFA, you know, I, I didn't think it was that, but it has now seems like it's come to light that it is that. Um, so unfortunate. I was so excited for the PFA. I was excited for... Um, it seems like they're making like really big, big progress. And, you know, as much as Leslie says, it's, it's not a, a step back. And I know that she's being positive when she says that I do think that there is, there are elements just perception wise, you know, now it's going to take fighters even more time to come and to believe that this is going to be helpful. Um, I think what can help is that this is, uh, it helps to show that you know what like she said the fighters need to be protected first that's the biggest priority that's the biggest thing that needs to happen and then after that uh we can start making you know rules and regulations and um start doing collective bargaining um but they have to be the the, the way in which you operate the operations have to really be set up first before you start trying to do stuff otherwise people get left behind people get stepped on uh and you know you hope that that's not the way jeff intended things to happen but you never know and especially when something like this comes out you really don't know what people's intentions were all along and i think that that's the hardest part about it um wow breaking news i mean 
That's what goes on in this show. Girl fight talk. Got girls coming in and talking stuff, right? This is amazing. I, it, it, my goodness. But yeah, I'm excited, guys. This is this is an episode where you see how, you even see the progression, right? We had Lucas on, we had Leslie on, and it's great to see like the people and I I love these podcasts because I think that it it provides for some transparency right there's no I never sent Leslie a script of what I'd want her to share I never even sent her notes probably should have but I never sent her notes of like you know um this is what we're going to talk about um blah 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 she just came on and was just ready to go which is awesome and it's so organic and so transparent in that way uh but when that happens people also might feel inspired to share some stuff that (laughs) just wasn't necessarily a part of the plan which is really cool um so keep your eyes open keep your ears open um hopefully more of this story will be able to help unravel and i'm sure other outlets will 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 jump on and and see this and will want to add to the story as well so uh, but you know you heard it here first on girl fight talk so shout out give a give give respect give your shout outs um but um yeah in Victor 20 we talked about it just a short bit with with uh leslie um i was really sad to see that uh that tanya evinger lost her title um i know she can come back uh give her her arm some time to heal and, and recover and she'll make her way back um and who knows maybe this might be the opportunity for her to come over to the ufc um even on a loss that's okay she's a former champion and i think that she has enough clout um to make that transition so uh hopefully the next stage in her career will become clear and she'll be able to make a good transition um and victor 20 they had a huge that was a huge uh milestone event for them anytime any organization i mean this is episode 10 of girl fight talk right you've been with us for 10 whole episodes at least you should have been here for 10 whole episodes but we're making progress we're, we're excited to can keep moving forward and um we we want to keep you guys aware of what we're doing we're hoping to go out and cover ufc 207 at the end of the year we just applied for a press passes so we'll, we'll see what what happens but um you're going to start seeing us everywhere. So go ahead and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Um, let us know that you're supporting us. Give us uh, feedback on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I try to keep on Twitter. I think that's where most of like the MMA action is going on. So uh, Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. iTunes, yeah, people like YouTube better. So um, check us out. Uh, support us. Like us make some comments one guy made a comment the other day i should read it verbatim i can't find it right now but he said something like to the effect of girl fight dear girl fight talk you're so awesome um you should be bigger than what you are i love all your your episodes and i was like oh my gosh if i was like if i was white i'd be like blushing but So I just was like, oh, that's such great feedback. Thanks. So don't send any bad feedback to ruin that good feeling that I had on the inside. Um, but, yeah, we love your guys' support. Um, just continue to like us. I mean, any you, you want us to talk about anything on the show, we're definitely open to talking about it. So um, we try to keep the, you know, important things. I, I'm a pretty – the way I think about the sport is I'm very – I like I like Leslie because I want to see the sport become like the NBA, like the NFL, in the sense that the fighters are taken care of, and I don't want that to be a variable of something that we always have to talk about all the time. But until we get there, we will talk about it. So I hope if you uh, if you care about the sport and the fighters and and having the best uh, athletic performances that we can get, then you should care about these things as well. So. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for today, guys. Um, have a happy Thanksgiving. Please, please, please take some time to be with your families. Um, I know Friendsgiving is a big thing. And I think in some ways it's a bigger thing because people don't like spending time with their family and yeah, definitely take, you know, have time with your friends, but family is, uh, it's so important. And so if you have, if you have family members who are still alive, um, you know, spend time with them. Please don't go killing people on Black Friday, right? We want to be nice. You can't just have Thanksgiving and then go murder somebody the next day. That's not cool. Like, that's just, just it's a contradiction. So, um, but guys, stay safe. Uh, enjoy. Eat lots of turkey. 
We'll see you next week.